good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for the introduction. Uh, we have to shorten it a, a bit. It seems a little long <laughs> for next presentation. But uh, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want you for a moment, really, think about, you don't have to close your eyes, but think about what would have happened to you, to the place that you live and where you work, where you do business, if the rich crest, 7.1 earthquake, would have happened here on one of our nearby faults. I can give you a little uh, projection of what could have happened. Based on FEMA's projection, probably 40% of our businesses wouldn't have come back. They would have been destroyed to the point that they would not be able to recover. 40% of our businesses. Also, based on the California shakeout predictions, we would have sustained more than $200 billion of 2008, uh, uh, 2008 dollar. Today would have been two, probably $250 billion damages. So with that, uh, I'm not sure how to, okay. If you think about seismic resiliency and preparedness, really we, there are many, many different aspects of what we should be prepared for. One is the social aspects, just like sustainability, resiliency is part of social, uh, is part of sustainability. To me, if you think about sustainability, it is the building and resiliency is its foundation. They're interrelated. Can you? Be, would a building stand without a foundation, any building? No. So resiliency is part of sustainability. And sustainability is balancing social, economic, and environmental aspect of our actions. On the social level, I'm just going to cover some of the most important parts of it. Today, today's challenge, biggest challenge in California is affordability of housing. This is the biggest issue all over the state, and Sacramento is dealing with it with, by thinking through, of throwing billions and billions of dollars into that. So imagine if we lose these vulnerable buildings that we have. If you look at the vulnerable buildings, basically they are our affordable housing. Just by default, being the cheapest in the market, they become our affordable housing. We already have problem. Imagine if we lose hundreds of thousands of additional units, like we did in Northridge. With environmental issues, many of these vulnerable buildings are older. They were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s. They have asbestos. They have lead. And if they're damaged, based on some pro uh, projections by US Green Building Council representative, when that big one happens, ladies and gentlemen, we may not have enough landfill in California to take the debris to. So, which means these are gonna be exposed in our environment. So, so uh, all that asbestos and lead are gonna be in our air. Economic benefit, we, businesses are, are the, important part of our social fabric. We, we employ people. We employ people. And we're all interrelated. In order to any business to survive after you lose 40% of your re revenue, it's almost impossible. The government is going to be impacted with the same economics because they're going to lose 40% of their revenue. When we can pay our fees or taxes or Therefore, uh, 
That's on the economic side. Now, uh, we heard that a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, I thought I'd show you this video that was uh, captured in a Japanese laboratory in Japan where we show uh, an actual option A, a building that is retrofitted, and an option B, a building that is not retrofitted, exact identical building. Let's watch this together for a moment. By the way, I visited uh, UC San Diego. We have uh, one of these uh, shaking uh, laboratory table laboratories in UC San Diego. Unfortunately, we can only fit one building at a time. So that's why I'm using this Japanese uh, uh, video. But uh, I want to, because we are focused on business community, and educating the business community and changing the culture of the business community. I want to focus on the business community and removing a couple of myths. One myth, ladies and gentlemen, is that doing retrofitting is prohibitive, is not practical. That's absolutely not true. That's absolutely not true. And I will show you in this per, uh, uh, kind of a example of a two and a half million dollar building. This could be a, the building that we saw in the video. That could be an office building. It could be a soft story apartment building. So we're using just the average value of two and a half million dollars for a 10 unit apartment building or uh, 5,000, 6,000 square feet commercial building. It takes about $75,000 to retrofit this two and a half million dollar building. That's about 3% of the value of the building. Sometimes it would be less. Depending on how the building is built, it could be more, but most of the time I would uh, suggest that it would be even less. Now, by spending that money up front, retrofitting a building, what are you getting? First of all, you're protecting your equity, your asset. You, you may have 50% equity, you may have 100% equity. There are a lot of mom and pops that own these buildings for a long time and that's their livelihood, generational livelihood, okay? And you're protecting your asset, you're protecting your cash flow. The moment a building is red tagged where you cannot occupy the building, rent is, stops coming in. You still have mortgages, mortgage payments you have to make. Then you heard from uh, our uh, prior speaker, that now the legal and, and the uh, uh, precedent in California dictates possible owner's negligence liability for the first time. This wasn't true 20 years ago or 30 years ago. But now that's the precedent in appellate court. So you need to worry about that. Then death and injuries, of course, which we saw happen in the Northridge earthquake and which was uh, much, much smaller than what the big one is supposed to be. It's supposed to be 50 times larger than Northridge. If you've been through Northridge, like I have been, I wonder what, you know, I don't like to see that day. But also in addition to the all these losses, you also know all of a sudden the city will come to you and give you an order to demolish because the city is uh, worried about the safety of our communities. You have a half demolished building, it's not a, a safe condition. So they come and give you 60 days, 180 days, you have to demolish. Now you will see that if you have especially hazardous material in the building, you're gonna have to pay more than what it would have cost you to retrofit the building, to demolish the building. 
And at uh, that moment where there are thousands of buildings have to be demolished, of course, the price would go up and, uh, and it's not a position I would want to be in. And then, of course, uh, uh, the hazmat. Uh, now, there are common sense. We talked about loss of cash flow. We talked about uh, in a business circumstance, we have inventory and equipment that sometimes are a lot more expensive than the value of the building. There are a lot of high-tech companies that have equipments in there that are 10 times more expensive than we, of course, we have the loss of workforce, and either by injury or death, um, uh, God forbidden, or uh, by the fact that they're not going to stick around while you're trying to rebuild. People have bills to pay, rent to pay. They're going to have to move on. And these are people that you work hard, training for over the years and over decades, all of a sudden our most important asset, gone. We talked about liability. This is one thing I'd like to focus on is that it doesn't matter if you're a tenant or if you're a building owner. That's another myth that we have to remove. Sometimes at being a, an engineering company and a construction, I ask people just, are you, what have you done about your structural integrity of your building? Unfortunately, most people that are tenants, occupants of these buildings, they always say, well, I'm not the owner of the building. But ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter if you own the building or not. You're still responsible for you conducting a business. You're responsible to your employees. You're responsible to your tenants, I mean, uh, to your customers, clients that visit you in the building. So you're responsible. Now, environmental concern, we talked about possible toxic substances that are in the building and the building material. It's common sense. You're going to lose market share. Same thing with the customer. Just like employees cannot stand around, your customers are not going to stand around. If you cannot provide the service, according to uh, one of the statistics, 40% of American businesses cannot stay in business with more than nine days of IT loss, loss of IT ca capacity. Nine days. That's all it takes for them to go out of business. Now, another case study that I'd like to, this is on a much bigger scale. We talked about mom and pop building owner. This is on a major multinational corporation, Anheuser-Busch. 50 years ago, almost 50 years ago, they suffered after the Silmar earthquake, 1973 earthquake. And uh, so what they did, they did some retrofitting. Right after that, they spent $1.3 million or $1.2 million to retrofit their buildings. This is an amazing case study, ladies and gentlemen. We really have to pay attention, and this is what every business in California needs to listen to, pay attention. That $1.2 million, 20 years later, when the Northridge earthquake happened, we didn't know when it was going to happen. It happened 20 years later. Saved them, according to their estimate, more than $1 billion, about $350 million of damages, direct uh, structural damages, and $750 million potential loss of business. More than a $1 billion that they uh, return on investment. So... Earthquake retrofitting, ladies and gentlemen, is good business. It's not something that we should think about as a check mark, okay, are we ready or not? This is something really we should take into consideration as part of our business plan. Just like all the different parts of our business plan we have to worry about when we're actually planning a business, what we're proposing here is that we need to make earthquake resiliency here in California an element of our business plan. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.